and we're going to start with the subclavian line. So we've already got a mask on the patient and it'll be important for anybody in the room to have a mask on while we're changing um, a central line dressing because it's a sterile procedure. So we have a pick line and a subclavian. We're going to change the subclavian first. Um, the subclavian usually tends to be more temporary. The pick line can be in for a couple of weeks. Um, and so each line has its own parameters for when you're going to change the dressings, how often, and how long they can actually dwell in the patient for infusions. So I'm going to open my kit. Now the first thing I have is my antiseptic. Okay, so I can actually clean my hands first. Not every kit has that. Not every kit has the antiseptic. Right. Um, so you have to have some way to do some hand hygiene before you do this. So I'm going to put on my sterile gloves. The sterility. So the antiseptic makes it just your hands really sticky and, uh, you know. Oh, nice. It slides on pretty good. The only people who put on sterile gloves right the first time every time are people who literally do this all day long. Mm -hmm. So don't feel like you need to apologize to your patient. Don't feel like you need to be in a rush. None of that. Oh, yeah. Especially if you're a student and you're shaking a lot and <laughs> you have these hand tremors. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and set up my sterile field. And that means I can bring any of this stuff out, okay? So... And then the inside here, that whole tray is sterile. I can plop it down here in the middle. I could dump it all out if I wanted to so that I can tell exactly what's in it, okay? So taking off the dressing itself is actually just a dirtyish procedure, okay? So he can just take that off entirely. One of the biggest things, just like an IV, is holding it in place. Just because when you're pulling and yanking a lot of these things off, you don't want to accidentally pull out this, you know, subclavian line here. All right, now we've got a clean site. Okay, so I'm going to, this is a skin protectant swab, so I'm gonna use it towards the end. I'm gonna go ahead and open it, okay? I'm gonna take my CHG, and I'm gonna pop that, and I'm just gonna shake it down until the center looks wet. So that little triangle there should start to look wet, okay? All right, do you see how that's starting to turn a little damp? Okay, now, this is not like the iodine swabs and the alcohol swabs that we used to use. For those, you would always go center out, and you would go in concentric circles. CHG, you actually go back and forth, okay? So you want to think through how you're going to do this. Now, this is going to be my dirty hand now, and this is going to maintain my sterile hand, okay? So I'm going to stabilize this, and I'm still going to start at the center. And I'm going to go back and forth here. And I need to be able to get under that catheter. So I'm making sure that it does not move from where the skin is. And then, potentially the hardest part is I'm going to let it dry. Now, if there was crust on this, on this catheter, and sometimes there is, you can either use an alcohol swab that you have, or you have this gauze that you can use for that. Now, if your patient has drainage here, instead of using the gauze to dry with, you might use the gauze to go over it. If you use gauze over your central line, you then have to change it every 24 hours. Not an option. Okay. So I used it just to kind of um, dry off the skin because he's a mannequin. Okay. Um, for your regular patient, you're probably going to just let it air dry. Don't fan it. Obviously, you're not going to blow on it. So this is the skin protectant swab, and I don't want this um, on the actual entry site for the catheter, okay? So I actually want this to be on those outside edges so that the dressing adheres well, okay? Now my hand's going to be sticky. <laughs> there are lots of different types of these tegaderm dressings. This one happens to have a CHG in the middle, okay? So this has a little impregnated thing to keep infection down. Mm. Now, I'm going to release this.
I'm going to put the CHG directly over the side itself. And I'm going to kind of smush that down a little bit. And then I'm going to make sure that this edge secures really well. Then I'll take off this other edge. Make sure it secures really well. Now this one has a dressing on top of it. I got the stickies. <laughs> got the stickies. So I'm going to pull the dressing off the top. And again, you don't have to do this in exactly this order. You could pull this off first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Ooh, the stickies. This is going to stick like this right here. Okay. It's important that the site is in the middle of your CHG. And then you're going to sign and date your artwork so that everybody knows when the next dressing change is due. All right, Kat, that wraps it up for CBC Subclavian Central Line Dressing Change.